Hello everyone and welcome to Sci-Fi Zone where we celebrate science fiction movies and TV shows from the past, the present and the future. I'm here today with Claire and MPS and we're coming to you from the wonderful comic book store of Alternate Worlds. Everybody loves time travel. It's a time travel episode. In fact, if you rewind this episode, we will be actually going back into our own past. How good <laughs> is that? So we're going to be talking about some time travel movies. But before we get that, we're actually going to wind our own clock back. And Claire's going to have a bit of a chat about something time travelish that she absolutely loves. So Claire, over to you. I do. We all know how much I love a good oh, time travel story. Time travel I do. Story. Absolutely fantastic. So there's a show on Netflix at the moment called Travelers. And it's about time travellers. Um, Shock horror. This, yeah, what a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, initially when I saw it, Travellers doesn't really tell you much. But once I started watching the first episode, I was pretty hooked pretty quickly. Um, it's time travel. It's time travel in a way we haven't quite seen before. So it's not a person going forward in time or going back in time. It's um, a, a, an organised group of people coming back from the future into our time specifically to make changes to try and save their world. So they're living in a society where um, there's been complete disaster for a very long time um, and the human race is on the verge of extinction. And they've discovered a way to travel back in time by projecting their minds, not projecting, sending their minds to take over the mind of a person in the past. So they do it as ethically as possible. They find people who are about to die and they put them, put their, these minds into that person and then save the life. I couldn't help but think when you said they, uh, they've got problems in the future and they've come back into the past to try and fix things up, I thought, I just, the first thing that came to mind is they've come back from the future into the past to try and make our show better. <laughs> <laughs> Improve the quality of our show I'm not for sure, the future. <laughs> I'm not sure that's possible, Dad. <laughs> anyway, continue. I, I'm so. actually from Quantum Leap, yeah. so I'm, there you I'm, go. I'm the... Me- Why haven't I jumped yet? Yeah, yeah I, I'm ziggy. stuck here yeah. forever. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to catch up, but it was the first thing that came to my mind. Yeah. Going. So it's a drama show, it's a serious show, it's yep. definitely not a comedy. No, no, I get that. Um, and the, we follow the story of one team, and they're only one team of many, and each team has five members. They have the team leader, a historian, who remembers information in sort of in between where they land and where they end up so that they know what's going to happen in the future. Um, a medic, obviously, a tactical officer and an engineer. When they first arrive, there are probably around 3,000 travellers who've already come back to our time. Um, by the end of the three-season arc, we're up to almost 6,000, so they're constantly selling, wow. sending more people back, more teams back to, to run different missions. It's worldwide. So the story we see is based in America, but there are teams in okay. most other countries, lots of other countries. Um, so they know the future. They know a bit about what's going to happen. But of course, every mission they undertake mm. changes that future. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, actually, yeah. Yeah. So... Um, what they're, they're trying to do things that they think will affect the future in mm. a positive way, basically to save the human race. Mm. But of course, you can never quite know what the yeah, repercussions are Yeah, the ramifications, yeah, exactly. It's the old butterfly effect, is that what they call it? Yeah, yeah. exactly, so yeah. And, and the people who are now in our time, they can never go back. Yep. So once they, once they come oh, here, okay. that's it, they're stuck. They, ha- they have to live out the rest of whatever life they have. Um, and... Uh, but they keep getting missions and of course those missions change they don't always know what's changed in the future and more people come as more people come back they're coming back from a different future so what yeah. they know what the, the what our team knows about the future is no longer correct that sounds so like something you can just do your head in. Quite future. complicated. <laughs> it's really complex. And of course they also have to deal with um, the life of the person whose body they've taken over. Um, so the team leader, for example, is, is married and he has to be able to pretend to his wife that he's still the same person. Wow. Yet his romantic interest is one of the other team. Yeah. So, so he, he's actually tricky. romantically... That's, that's correct. Um, there's a question of... Uh, I, was, I was quite curious how they were going to deal with gender because initially everyone is in the body of someone who is the same gender that they were originally. Uh, they do play with that a little bit later in the show. Um, Eric McCormick, who is probably best known for Will and Grace for his comedy work, um, is the team leader in this and he is really good. I was a little bit hesitant watching him in something serious because I didn't know what he'd be like, but he's absolutely great. Um, It's a really good cast. 
good mix of people. Um, the engineer, for example, ends up in the body of a teenage boy who's still at school, still living with his parents. But he is actually well over 100 years old because he has been put into various bodies at various stages wow. and lived three separate lives, raised children in three separate bodies. Um, so you've got this, this guy who's a teenage kid who's still supposed to be at school, right on the verge of leaving school, um, who has three lifetimes of experience. Wow. Um, it explores the relationships really well, the relationships among the team, the relationships with other teams. Um, they know there are other teams out there, but they're not supposed to make contact unless the director tells them to. Um, we find out more about the director in season two, which is a really interesting twist. Um, and are there any yeah. bad? Sorry, are there any bad guys? Any, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, with all the thousands of people, someone has to have nefarious yeah. sort of intentions. Yeah, and, definitely. You know. um, and that comes about by by one of the changes that that they make that affects the future. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. So the bad guys end up sort of being created by something yeah. they've done. It would make sense. Yeah. 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 So it's really interesting. Um, and of course, uh, they see us as the bad guys, and we're the ones who are destroying the planet. Mm. We're the ones who are setting up this future in which they are barely hanging on. Yeah. I so mean, yeah. they're trying to save us and they're trying to fix the planet, but yeah. they see it as being our fault. It all comes down to that argument of saying, oh, you fix one problem only to create another. Yeah. And of course, if you don't know what that other problem happens to be, exactly. then it just sort of like will invent itself out of nowhere. So That's right. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and different missions sometimes interfere with other missions yep. and those sorts of things. Wow. Um, it's absolutely fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. They, they, because they're travelling in a mind, they can't bring anything back with them. Yep. So that's why they send the engineers. They send someone who knows about the future technology and can build the things they need. Um, but of course, they've got to build it from available products. Um, so they're doing things like setting up, setting up um, places where they can build what they need to be able to create the stuff that they need to be able to build the wow. stuff that they need. <laughs> Um, and, oh, they're, and they're putting aside stashes of things for the people that are coming in the future. Um, so how do we know we're going to have this at this point in, in the future at that time? We know it because we put it there. Gotcha. It's, it's really complicated and absolutely fascinating. And then you get some of the, the characters like the little girl who sells cookies in the pilot episode mm. who rocks up, rocks up to the door and goes, your mission is, is this and this and this. And then you go, hang on a second, is she actually one of those or is she... Um, yes. It's been taken over partially. Yes. So because the next thing she goes to start selling cookies again, the, and the wife goes, but you've already done this side of the street. So yeah. um, that got me a little confused as to where they sort of sit. Yeah, well, th that's how they send messages back from the future. They send them back by taking over someone's mind and getting them to, to say the message. If they do it to an adult, because the brain is, is fused, like because the brain is fully developed, um, it would kill them. But if they do it to a child, they can use them for a very short period of time, just long enough to pass on the message. That makes sense. And then, and then they go back. So you don't find out that yeah. detail in that first episode. But um, it, so you, you're randomly getting these kids just walking yeah. up to the guys and saying, you, the, you, your, the director your says, directive your is mission this. is go to coordinates, blah, 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 blah. You need to be there in less than an hour. Should you choose to accept yeah. it? Yes, exactly. So my, you don't get a choice. <laughs> no, my problem <laughs> don't with that get is someone would tell me something, I'd be going, why does this kid talk to me? Oh, what did he just say? I've got, I can't remember but what But they happened. know, and this is oh, the thing. Yeah. They've been trained in the future. They know what they're getting into, except that sometimes they get it wrong. Gotcha. And that in itself is absolutely fascinating. Well, the show is on Netflix. Yes. Yes. Um, now, after Claire's description of everything, if your brains are currently <laughs> leaking out of your ears, and believe me, uh, it's like I'm about to go thermonuclear, but uh, there you go, how good is that? So yeah, be sure to check it out. It sounds yeah. like it's something really, really it's good. A great show. Clearly, if you want a bit of a bubblegum show, it ain't the show to watch. So no. if you like if it's something a bit more cerebral and it'll uh, test your intelligence a little bit, then by all means, give it a burr or what can I say? So as I said, this is a time travel episode. So we're actually gonna travel in time by exactly one minute <laughs> because we're gonna be talking about some time travel movies straight after this. So don't go away, we will be right back. Alternate Worlds has been specialising in comics and collectibles for over 40 years. With a back issue collection of over half a million comics covering the golden age right through to latest releases, including signed and slabbed gems. They also have an enormous graphic novel collection, one of the largest ranges of manga in the country, as well as toys, statues and pops, and new items are arriving every Wednesday. Each month, Alternate Worlds hosts its own premium comic day, where all the rare treasures are put on display for inspection and purchase. 
The store also runs regular tournaments and competitions for both comic and gaming fans. And for local and interstate and international buyers, the Alternate Worlds website features their complete range of products. So whether you come in online or in store, visit them soon. Welcome back to the show. If you hit the fast forward button, we've actually moved forward in time and time travel is just enough to drive you nuts sometimes. As we discussed with the Traveller show, it can be really, really full on. But with time travel movies, there are so many varieties and types and styles. You sort of have to wonder, not just which ones are good ones and which ones are bad ones, but also to work out the implications and how the time traveling thing works, whether you're using a machine, whether you're using force of will, the, pro the prospect of going forward, going backwards. I'm just gonna chuck it out here to my panelists. <laughs> Which are the time travel movies that sort of stick in your mind and to why? Well, the biggest one I think is the Terminator series. Mm. Um, and it gets complicated. It does, yes. The, the first one was a fairly simple concept. The second one built really well on that concept and my, the second one's my favourite out yep. of all the series. And then after that, it just got more and more and more complicated. Yeah. Um, to the point where I don't know <laughs> what's going on there You sort anymore. of lose track, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the whole new way, yeah. the new the reason why the new film's being done because it's actually going to take over some of those because yeah. it just got crazy. And then you had the series that kicked in. And yeah. So Changed I don't again. even know where we are. So I'm going back to Terminator 2 for that one. <laughs> I'm just going to start. Because you think it gets to a certain point and you go, oh, it's all done and dusted. Everybody's happy, sky and it's gone, ta-da-da. It's beautiful. And then it all just gets reinvented all over yeah. again. And yeah. it can And that's the thing about time it. travel. It, 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 it's always there as a possibility. Once it's in the mix, you can always go back and do something else. You can yeah. always back and choose a different path. You can always go forward and make something else happen. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not... It's never going to be simple. It's like the worst choose your own adventure ever because <laughs> you, when you change one thing, as we've mentioned yeah. before, it goes off in a different tangent. And yeah. by going off in a different tangent, if you change something there, who knows what's going to happen. So, yeah. you know, like in the Traveller series, if mm. you've started off with this is where it is, once you introduce... So if you've got multiple teams coming yep. in, how different is that future going to look for them yep. later on? So, yep. And the same with, with this. The future looks completely different in Terminator every single time we see a new film. Mm. It just gets a bit crazy. Yeah. So I've always wanted to ask this question, and this was a, uh, covered off, I think it was in Time Cop. What happens in that paradox where you meet yourself? Yeah. Okay? So let's assume, like, you know, 20 years from now, you've come back and you've met, and what happens, like, when you interact with your future self? And I think it was in that movie where... Um, I'm sure it was Time Cop, where the guy in the present was a nice bloke, but then in the future... He turned out to be a really nasty passing yeah. and he came back to visit himself and he was virtually telling himself off. But they couldn't touch because if they touched it, they, they um, occupied the same <laughs> time and space and they'd both blow up or something. That so kind of stuff is interesting because we, in reality, we have no idea what mm. would happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if it were possible to bring someone back, would you even know it was yourself? Would yeah. you believe it was yourself? Because, of course, the human mind is capable of a writing of off all sorts of things as just... Yeah. Would we be Ridiculous. an echo or a shadow of ourselves that yeah. we couldn't actually physically be here? Because to physically, yeah. And there's the whole thing of meeting yourself and talking to yourself could actually change your future self. Yeah. So oh, absolutely. Yeah. You, it's you, like you giving yourself advice. Self. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like, like, it's like yeah. Marty in Back to the Future giving the doc yeah. the advice to wear the flak jacket yeah. so that when he gets back, he's yeah. not going to just die. Yeah. So. Actually, the Back to the Future films are pretty good because they cover yeah. both the past and the future and the whole thing with the almanac, you know, you're having information yes. about the future and then changing it yeah. accordingly yeah. Uh, based on, you know, what's coming up. And, yeah. and if you put your mind to it, it can really sort of do your head in in a big way trying to work out the... Which is why the, I love it so much. Much. Yeah. There are just so many possibilities. Yep. Um, and, and well, Star Trek, three of the Star Trek movies yes. are about time travel or involve time travel. Yeah, well, for them, going back in time is just like, oh, we're just going to the they've local shop. They've figured out how to do it and yeah. they just do it when they need to. Yeah. Um, and they throw Q in the mix and he just bounces around between yep. time yeah. wherever and whenever. So it, that, yep. that's an yep. easy out, basically. Yeah. Um, but... And it's interesting, the difference between some movies where they're doing it um, for sort of altruistic motives to try and save the world. Yep. Um, the, the Star Trek movie the, the, with the whales. Oh, yeah, number four. Number four. Boy charm. Um, they, you know, they, they're trying to save not just our world, but yeah. the whole Federation, in yep. fact. Um, 
and it's just, it's kind of one little thing that seems tiny, but you're talking about a couple of whales. So you can imagine what would happen, they take the whales back to the future, the 24th century, just chuck them in the ocean, it's all fantastic, and they realise, hang on, there's no plankton for exactly. the whale or krill or whatever it is that they eat, yeah. and they just die, <laughs> they die yeah. off anyway, so... Or there's, there's cause always, and effect. There's always a bigger fish. There's so. always a bigger fish, oh golly. And, and you compare that to, say, Back to the Future, where yeah. it's all about the person, it's yep. all about what they want to change and what they want to fix and what they want to do. Yes. It's not about saving the world. Yes. Um, and I, I, I don't know, I struggle with that a little bit. Um, yeah, but it's Marty's world that changes. And Marty goes from being, if you look when, when Biff is there, you know, getting the homework from his father, yeah. you know, uh, then next, by the end of the film, he's washing the cars because he's yeah. been sort yep. of taken yeah. down Oh yeah, that's, that's so a really good yeah. example where so yeah, he, he, the guy's a successful author now and yeah. everything and his whole yeah. personality is completely different. Yeah. Super selfish. Yeah, yeah. Going back and changing something to fix your life. Yes. What that's going to do to everyone else's lives. Yeah. yeah, but he had no idea what that was going to no, do. No, and that's so. the whole point. Yeah. Yes. You don't ever and know. Like, but there but isn't going to be a way to know what all the repercussions yeah. are. No. no matter how much you study it, you could sit there and study it for 50 years before you decide to come back and make the change. And you still wouldn't know what the repercussions were going to be because it's not, it's never just you. Yep. It affects the whole, everyone around you and everyone around them and everyone yeah. around them. Because in actual fact, if he really wanted to, to go back to the way it was, he could go back in time and just not do anything. Yeah. But he doesn't, so he actually lives the better life forward. For and then, him. And For him. Then, yeah, and then goes forward again in the second film yeah. and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Remember, so every positive has a negative no matter how you look at it too. And plus there's also the situation in those movies where no matter how much they try and change the past, they just can't do it. Yeah. 12 Monkeys was a classic example yes. of that, where they're trying to yeah. um, get rid of, prevent the virus from being released yeah. and it still happens no matter what. Yeah. There's the whole idea of the universe is, is on a path it, and it's the, it's, the destina it's the predestination thing is, you know, are we on this path and is there no way to change yep. it or is it just yep. free will, luck, yes. whatever. And they're, and they're, if you, depending on which way you look at it, yep. they tell very different stories. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, one film, and it's not really a science fiction movie, but it's a time travel film, so make of this what you will. It was actually called Somewhere in Time with Christopher Reeve and Jane Seymour. And at the start of the film, the old version of Jane Seymour gives the young, the current Christopher Reeve a, a, a watch, right? He falls in love with her as she existed a hundred and something years mm -hmm. ago from a photograph. He wills himself back into the past, so there's no machines, there's no yeah. technology. He wills himself back into the past, and he actually gives the watch to her. Okay, yeah. and then of course he then goes back forwards in time. Yeah. But then you sit and think about it: where did that watch come from? Because it's just been given to yes. him, to her, to him, to her, and yes. it's just going in circles. So yeah. the, the, really the, it's hitting. in one of the Star Trek movies too. In fact, the same movie yeah. um, with the glasses. He goes oh, and yeah. sells the glasses so that they can get the money to do the thing. Yeah. Yeah. And because he sold the glasses to this op shop, yeah. McCoy later on is able to buy the well, glasses the and give them yeah. to him as a gift. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of that circular stuff. And it and it's it's got to stop somewhere. Well, the the time loop thing is yes. an interesting one yeah. as well, where you get stuck in a loop. Yep, yep. Um, and Groundhog you've got Day to was out. a good example of that because yeah. that was the only element in in that film. But he had to learn a lesson, yeah. I think, at the end of it because he was not mm. a nice guy at the start. He was a bit yeah. sort of whatever, and then yes. he had to go through the process. And I can't remember what the what the time period was, but it was a long, long time. Because he learned how to play the piano. Number of, the number of times the number he of repeated times, it, yeah, you mean? Yeah, it was, it was like in the <coughs> He went thousands. through a lot of loops. It was a thousand. <laughs> it was thousands. So yeah. to think... Which I've got to say <laughs> says something about how hard it was to teach him that lesson. Yeah, or how, how not... I mean, how much he, he didn't want to progress for. He went through a lot of loops. Yeah. But he, he, in that essence, if you look at it from that point of view, did the same day happen for everyone? So really, is this day happening again and again and again? Well, clearly exactly he was the, the only way. one who was conscious of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So does that affect the entire world or does that affect a, oh, let's just I move on to the next film. You can have ones where you <laughs> have a really good message in them. And one that was made in the late 70s, I think it was, uh, was called Time After Time, uh, based on the H.G. Wells story. But in this instance, Jack the Ripper takes a time machine from the 1800s to the contemporary society. And, and H, you know, Wells follows him to try and stop him. And there's a sequence where the two of them meet up. And of course, the Wells character has just jumped a hundred and something years and is completely oblivious to the fact there's been world wars and all the rest of it. And he thinks it's all the world's utopia. We're all flying in airplanes and it's all wonderful. Yeah. But when he meets up with Jack the Ripper, Jack actually says, look at this world as it is today. You know, all the violence is still mm -hmm. there. Yeah. This is a world that he is a part of. And that's actually a message in that. Yeah. I mean, we all think the future is promising, it's all Star Trekky, well, and it's all utopia, hope. but the reality is could be completely different. And this movie sort of um, 
dis discuss that. Yeah, it's interesting the the, mm. the idea of what we think the future is going to be. I yeah. mean, there's that whole you know, where's my flying car? Where's my jetpack? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Ours are on order. Yeah, it's they're on, on order. order. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can buy one in an alternate world just back there. <laughs> um, but but it's the difference, I think, between what we think and what we hope. Yep. And most people would see what they hope as being what they think, where in yep. reality they don't necessarily actually believe that that's yep. going to happen. Yeah. And, and, of course, the direction we're heading in now yeah. is not great. Yes, So true. we're probably having... having we're probably traveling towards travelers. Now that's going, as opposed to Star yeah. Trek where everything's bright, shiny, and we're traveling the well, universe. Yeah. If it helps at all, just think 30 years ago, even for, let's say, what are we now? Uh, 1979, so 40 years ago, all the things that we've got today in our society, trying to predict those back then, mm. and there's all these things that we have now, no one would mm. ever have thought of. That's right. No that's science right. fiction movies ever touched it or even thought of it, because yep. it's just, it was too futuristic even for us, yep. and yet it's here today. So, and smartphones is the most obvious one. Yeah. Social media is the next one. So, um, who would have thought, eh? Mm. So, there you go. So, yeah. but there are some really, really good movies out there worth checking out for whatever reason, if they'll do your, um, uh, do you, do you, <laughs> do you mind? I just got shown a message from our DFP. He said the word Eloy. Now, if I say Eloy, do you know what Eloy is? Yes. Do you, he won't know. Of course, Claire will know. It's actually from the time machine. The yeah. Morlocks and the Eloy. Yeah. So I think that was uh, Dave's attempt at showing that he's a bit of a clever cook in this thing. <laughs> so if you ever watch <laughs> the time machine, time they go so far into the future that society's been broken up into two. The Eloy, the pacifist people, and the Morlocks who live under the ground. And what do the Morlocks do? They eat the Eloy. How good is that? <laughs> yeah, it's a heck of a twist, that. <laughs> they chow down on them like you wouldn't believe how good is that. Yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Really? Like, I was going to go back to watching the film. Soylent Green is people. <gasps> oh, don't say <laughs> things like that. Oh, my goodness gracious. And in the final countdown, they don't get to destroy the Japanese um, fleet on the way to Soy Pearl Harbor. So uh, <laughs> there you go. Oh, golly, golly, golly. Uh, one very, very good movie, well worth checking out, just for the entertainment factor alone, is Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise mm. and Emily Blunt. Brilliant. And yeah. talk about Groundhog Day, just relives his life over and over and over and over Although and over I'm again. I'm not sure that's technically time travel. Well, he does go back in time. In, because his, he's in his mind, at least. I don't know no, what it's he's doing. No, it's, it's, a loop. It's, actually, it's a loop. It's a, it's a loop. Yeah? Yeah. He relives okay. his life over and over again. Yeah. And, of course, in the show, because he dies so many times and he gets yeah. looped that many times, they edit it so quickly that he's just getting knocked off again and again yeah. and again. And, oh. can, and he's got to keep going further every single time to get through to the where he's got to go. And it's just like, oh, you poor, How you poor dude. How exhausting would that be? <laughs> it's, like, it's, not like again, video, not it's like again. a video game that you just can't get to the next level yeah. and the yeah. next level and yeah. the next level. You just keep getting And then we find out that she's been through the same yes, thing. Yes, that's right. Oh, absolutely brilliant. That was so. a really good oh, movie. Yeah, fantastic. Really good. That was one of the things that sort of tipped me back into being a bit of a Tom Cruise fan. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Really um, and one other one which I thought was really interesting, I think it was called Looper, where yes. a future version of a person will be sent back in time to be executed here because they're you know, tracking everybody in the future. Yeah. And some of the people they send back because there's a guy there with a gun, as soon as the person appears, boom, they shoot him. And sometimes <laughs> the person they shoot is themselves, their future version of themselves. How good they get payment, of course. But uh, imagine that. You get yeah. to plug yourself, so to speak. So. But if you shoot yourself from the future, Sure, to the past. The past. It makes can, can you? Uh, you would actually. No, you no. wouldn't. It's complicated that yeah, one. It is. It's very and it's interesting the way it's set up that they get paid all this money to go back, but they only get to go back once. And then all the money that they get, yeah. they, they then get to live up to the point where, where they're going to. So you would back. think yeah. that if you knew that at some point you're going to be sent back, you'd change something to uh, to go on holiday so that that didn't happen. So unless you accepted your fate. So. Well, they. Yeah. Well, oh, I tell you what, it's try. absolutely fantastic. So. Uh, that actually will bring us to the end of the episode. So uh, if you haven't done so already, fast forward into the future and subscribe <laughs> to our channel and click on the bell for all the latest updates and exciting news if you haven't done so already. Next week, we're actually going to be talking about the classic 1927 movie Metropolis. So if you're really keen on the Tower of Babel, make sure you visit it in the zone. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye for now.